Hello everyone, it's Ange. Welcome back to Tiny Trinkets and Tarot. Today I have a deck review to offer you, and this deck was sent to me for review purposes by Liminal11. So the deck, as you can see here, is called Mystical Medleys. It is inspired by vintage cartoon art, and it was illustrated and authored by Gary Hall. So this is a an 80 card deck instead of 78 as there's two extra cards in the deck that you will see eventually when I show you the cards. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Liminal 11, this is their typical packaging, okay? So it's a really sturdy box within a box, so to speak, <laughs> okay? And so there's a magnetic closure at the very bottom that you open up. In this case here, this is the devil card depicted and it just slides out. <laughs> there are the cards in the book there. You can see in the inside flap, you can see the star card hiding down in there. <laughs> All right, and so the book and the cards just slide out. Oops. And there is the sun card there. Now, the Liminal 11 decks do come with uh, hardcover books, which I really do appreciate. They remind me of those golden books when I was a child, all those different stories. And so it just, this whole entire deck takes me back to my childhood memories of watching cartoons and just a carefree life of having fun and playing. And sometimes that's what I need. I just want a deck that sort of is lighthearted that I can pick up and um, it does read very well. I will say it, it, it packs a punch, right? It's not too airy fairy, but uh, it's just playful. And I really do enjoy that. So like I was saying, this is the hardcover book that it comes with and there's 57 pages in total here. It does start off with a bit of um, a foreword from Leah Moore. And then it goes right into the introduction by Gary Hall. He does explain sort of what inspired him to create the deck. And then you go right into the major arcana, which they do give a little picture and a write-up for each of the majors. But then when we get into the minors, it just simply lists them from Ace of Cups through the King. Okay, so there's no actual depictions. It's of each card anyways. There's still these fun little <laughs> drawings, of course, that do depict some of the cards in there. Okay, and then at the very back, we do have some tarot spreads. All right, so that is the book. And then we get into the cards. Now, I'm gonna show you the backs. This is what the backs look like. Okay, fully reversible. And again, has that very fun 1930s, 1940s cartoon feel to it. So each card, if you're um, seeing this on the camera correctly, it almost looks like there's some ink splots around here right? And it's supposed to have that like sort of vintage, maybe newspapery kind of feel, right? So all of the cards have that, that weird look on them. And I, I really do like that. So we start off, of course, with our Fool. And this does, again, follow the Rider Waite system, the Rider Waite Smith system. So you have all of your symbolism that you need there. And when I was working with this as well, it really gave me the vibes of the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And when they go into Toontown and they have all the tunes in there, it just, again, it just brings back so many childhood memories for me. I even put one of my childhood toys in this video <laughs> because it reminded me, again, of, uh, of my childhood. So thank you so much to Liminal11 for allowing me to review this for you. I've had a lot of fun with it and it certainly is going to be staying in my collection. You will be seeing more reviews on my channel as well. I have more decks uh, from various publishers that have been sent to me. Uh, when you are on my channel and watching my reviews, you can be sure that I will be completely honest and open with what I think and how I'm working with the deck. Uh, just so you know, when I am showing you these cards, I've already worked with the deck, okay, for a bit. So I did get to know them and, you know, how I feel about them because yeah, I don't think um, <laughs> that you can do a review without actually using a product, right? It's one thing to do a flip through and just quickly show the cards, but in terms of actually uh, using it, um, that would be a review. And so, again with using this, I have reached for it in the times where I just needed something a little bit lighter, a little bit more lighthearted. And it's really been, it's really been fun to have this addition into my collection. I don't really have too many cartoony decks that I would say, 
this Wheel of Fortune one, I was kind of like, what? Like, he looks angry. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, look at even these little characters. Like, what is happening? Even with the Hermit. The Hermit is normally a very special card to me. And I'm a Virgo as well, so depicted by the Hermit. But in this one, I don't think I've ever seen, like, a Hermit that's so distraught. Like, what's going on with my Hermit here? I'm not sure. Even his clothes are tattered. Hmm. I can't help but smile when I use this deck. I mean, if you look really closely in most of the cards, and I'll show you when I get to, to get to one. Of course, we're at the Devil in the Tower, which don't have any smiley faces in them, but um, most of the cards have these little smiley face flowers and whatnot. Even these little towers have little smiley faces on them. The sunflowers. <laughs> I mean, even the judgment card looks happy. Look at that. <laughs> we have quite a bit of construction going on around here. So if you hear traffic, my apologies, but that's real life. Nothing much I can do about that. <laughs> This is cool. This reminds me of like Santa Morte, the skeletons. I love a good Five of Cups card. I really do. I look for that in, in the decks. Are there certain cards that you look for before purchasing a deck? That'd be awesome to hear in the comments below if that's something that you do. It's really cool to to hear different people's takes on what exactly they look for, what they resonate with. And happy little mushroom there. <laughs> Got some fish in the night. Jumping around down there. Queen of Cups. That's one of my cards in the deck for sure. This Ace of Swords is a little beat up. But it's a new beginning, right? Gaining clarity, moving forward. This is interesting. It's popped out a couple times for me. And I think it's interesting how he's got the two swords in him. And then this one, he's actually, you know, sending out. It's like, did he pull it out and he's, you know what I mean? Going to throw it? Or did he sort of like intercept it? And like, no, no, you know, you're not going to get me. Or when it came up in one of my readings, it's almost like, some of the grief, some of the pain that we feel sometimes we can sort of project it on others if we're not careful. So really interesting. Again, it, even though it's a fun, cartoony, lighthearted deck, it, it still, you know, has all that symbolism that you can pull from for sure. This gave me like Jack and the Beanstalk vibes. <laughs> Six of Swords. Even the bed in the Nine of Swords has tears. Aww. Aww. 
Interesting, I don't think I've ever seen a Queen of Swords with a baby before. She came up in one of my readings too, and I noticed that right away. I thought, oh, interesting. You notice how she has shackles on, but they're not, they're sort of broken, the chains are broken. In terms of shuffleability, uh, this cardstock is quite cardboardy, I would say, you know, thicker. And so it, it is a chunkier deck, and for that, like, I love to ripple shuffle, but it's challenging. It, it is challenging with this deck, for sure. Challenging as we pull the Ten of Wands. <laughs> um, so I have been overhand shuffling it, just simply because uh, you, it can be riffled. I'll show you, actually, when I'm done flipping through these. But... It's just, it's difficult, and then I find you have to bend them the other way, otherwise they stay sort of bowed. But that's not a problem. I go back and forth between riffle and overhand anyways, depending on the cardstock. And I, I find, you know, if you have an extensive collection, you, you have to do that, because not every cardstock um, is riffle friendly. <laughs> so... I love that the Illuminati shows up in here quite a bit. <laughs> also, Gary talks about when he was making this deck, he was studying the tarot like alongside of creating these images. So I, I think his personality really does show up in here as well when you're looking at these uh, details. He's very determined, mastering his craft. Oh, look at the little snail. Or she, if you're watching, there's a snail in the Nine of Pentacles. <laughs> Where it should be, right? <laughs> two extra cards that I was speaking of are a happy squirrel card <laughs> and a sad squirrel card. <laughs> so that's kind of fun and cheeky just to throw in there as well. And again, those are the backs. And as promised, I will show you in terms of a ripple, just in case there's anyone out there that would like to see that happen. It's really stiff. Like, it actually hurts my hands. That's how stiff it is. And I have riffled and shuffled this quite a bit since I've had it, but it doesn't seem to be loosening up. Uh, definitely not a complaint. I do like a good sturdy cardstock. Of course, my ideal cardstock is a linen finish. <laughs> but now I'm just getting picky, right? So oh, it, it overhands nicely. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And that is the Mystical Medley's Tarot by Liminal Eleven. So I hope that you have enjoyed this review. If you have any questions about the deck, if you want to know anything more about it, um, my experiences with working with it or whatnot, you can go ahead and drop a comment or message me. I'm very open to discussing all of that and any of that. I love this space that we can talk about the things that we love, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.